In this video, we're going to look at the Gibbs Helmholtz equation. Now, in the last video, we looked at the Gibbs energy variation with respect to pressure. What the Gibbs Helmholtz equation is going to provide us is a general framework for the Gibbs energy variation with respect to temperature. Now, just as a quick reminder, um, previously we looked at um, the spontaneity criteria for uh, for uh, any type of process, right? Based on the entropy change and the Gibbs energy, right? We saw that the Gibbs energy, its uh, spontaneity criteria was that the change in the Gibbs energy had to be less than zero. And when we derived that quantity, it was because we were able to make a specific relationship between entropy and the Gibbs energy. And that relationship was that G over T uh, was always going to be greater than, or uh, G over T was equal to negative S, right? In that scenario that we looked at for a closed system, right? That we knew that there was going to be this explicit relationship between the Gibbs energy and entropy. But it depended on this G over T quantity and not just the Gibbs energy alone. I bring that up because this G over T uh, and its variation is going to be crucial for the Gibbs Helmholtz equation. Uh, and it's going to actually end up being very crucial for us for chemical equilibrium as well. So, uh, so keep in mind this relationship, how we got it. Um, and if you need to review it, go back and watch that video again. Okay, so uh, the starting point for the Gibbs Helmholtz equation, uh, its derivation is going to uh, start with the differential for the Gibbs energy, where we have VDP minus SDT. Okay, so if we, if we differentiate the Gibbs energy with respect to temperature at constant pressure, right? So if we do dG dt at constant pressure, right? We know that this, uh, this term dP dt at constant P minus S dt dt at constant pressure, right? And you've seen this uh, plenty of times before at this point, right? This guy goes to zero since we're varying pressure at constant pressure. This guy is one since it's dt over dt. And that just leaves us with the negative ent entropy. So we'll have dg dt at constant p is just going to be equal to negative s since this whole term drops out and this guy becomes one, right? So we have this relationship between the entropy and the varying Gibbs energy with respect to temperature. Let's leave that guy there for a second. Uh, we can actually derive another Gibbs energy expression that will be equal to negative s. So let's look at that. So if we start from the general definition of the Gibbs energy, right? We know that the Gibbs energy is just going to be equal to u plus PV minus TS, right? It's just our general definition for the Gibbs energy, right? We know that this U plus PV is the enthalpy. So we got H minus TS, right? We can bring over H to the other side, right? To get G minus H minus TS. And you probably see how we're gonna end up with negative S. All we have to do left at this point is just divide both sides by the temperature. So we end up with G minus H over T is going to be equal to negative S, right? So uh, the cool thing about this is that since both of these are equal to the negative entropy, we can actually set them both equal to one another, right? So if we set both of these guys equal, let me use a different color for that, right? What we're going to be doing is setting these two terms equal since they're both equal to negative S, right? So this guy setting it equal to this guy. So if we do that, right, we know that this differential dg dt at constant p is just going to be equal to g minus h over t, right? And these are very useful expressions. Um, I don't know if we've seen one that's quite this apparent, but uh, anytime when you can define the change in something, 
is just subtracting something from it, right? You have the definition of the Gibbs energy here in this in this um, derivative definition. These are really useful expressions where you can just, you know, say, okay, a change in Gibbs energy with respect to temperature is just going to be the Gibbs energy minus some factor, right? And divided by temperature. So I think that these are really, really useful expressions. And you'll see uh, where we get this in a second. Okay. So uh, if we so we noted this derivative, we have the the expression of this derivative in terms of the Gibbs energy because we're able to set these two equal since they're both equal to negative entropy. So what the Gibbs Helmholtz equation is, and I should probably start a new slide here, get a little bit more space. So the Gibbs energy, uh, the Gibbs Helmholtz equation, its derivation starts with just looking at the general derivative of g over t, right? So if we differentiate not the Gibbs energy but g over t right with respect to temperature right at constant pressure right so what we're going to be doing here is just take just using the product rule to get the general definition right we know that temperature 1 over t is obviously a function of temperature and the Gibbs energy is also a function of temperature. So we're gonna have to use the product rule if we wanna take the general derivative of G over T. So basically we'll just use the product rule, like I said, so um, leave one over T alone. You're gonna multiply that by the derivative of the Gibbs energy with respect to temperature at constant pressure. Uh, minus, so what we're gonna do is take the derivative of one over T which is just gonna be negative one over T squared, right? So then that term is just gonna be negative G over T squared, right? So hopefully you see what I've done here. This is just the general definition of the derivative of G over T, if G is a function of T, which we know it is, and obviously one over T is a function of T, right? Just taking this general product rule derivative. So we actually have an expression for this exact derivative. Let's go back to the other slide to show, right? G over T at constant P is this guy, right? G minus H over T. So we can plug that guy in here. So we'll get one over T, plug in our um, expression for this derivative, G minus H over T minus G over T squared. Okay. So uh, when you distribute one over T, uh, you're going to end up with three terms, right? You're gonna end up with G over T squared, right? If you think about breaking this guy up, you end up with G over T squared minus H over T squared minus G over T squared. Well, is that convenient, right? We end up with these G over T terms canceling out. That guy gone because of this guy, right? So those actually cancel out. So let me not put that zero there, right? So these guys, these terms cancel out G over T squared with G over T squared. So you end up with the final expression here of negative H over T squared, right? That's your derivative of G over T with respect to temperature at constant pressure. This is the differential form of the Gibbs Helmholtz equation. So this is the Gibbs Helmholtz equation, right? And obviously I mentioned, I just said that this is the differential form of the Gibbs free energy. Anything that has a differential form must also have an integral form, right? So let's look at what the integral form would be here, right? So if we were looking for a general change uh, in Gibbs energy with respect to enthalpy, right? Then that means that we would want to uh, integrate both of these with respect to temperature, right? So um, so if we look, want to derive the integral form here, right? So if we have these differentials on both sides, we'll have d d t, right? And let's say we know the change in Gibbs energy, right, over t, equal to negative delta h over t squared, right? And so to derive this integral form, what I'm gonna do is assume that the change in Gibbs energy is not dependent on temperature, right? Now we know that the Gibbs energy itself 
has an explicit temperature dependence. But uh, to a certain approximation, if your uh, energy is fairly constant, your free energy and your enthalpy, you can assume that these total changes in certain cases are constant enough that you don't have to integrate over an expression for them. So, uh, so if we do that, right, so we'll end up integrating on both sides, right? So what we'll have to do here is uh, we'll have D delta G over T on this side, and then we'll bring DT over here. ET. So on the left-hand side, what you're integrating with respect to, right? So you're integrating on the left-hand side with respect to delta G over T over T2, delta G over T1 of this differential of delta G over T. Right? And then on the left hand on the right hand side, you can pull that delta H out of the integral. And then you're just integrating with respect to T1 to T2, right, of 1 over T squared dt, right? So when you solve this integral, you get the integral form of the Gibbs-Hemholtz equation. So that's going to be delta G at T2 over T2 minus delta G at T1 over T1 is going to be equal to delta H, one over T2 minus one over T1, right? So this will be your integral form of the Gibbs-Hemholtz equation. Right, so basically what we did here was uh, start from a general um, relationships for the Gibbs energy and the, uh, well, the, relating the Gibbs energy to the entropy. Use those relationships in order to derive this explicit change for the Gibbs energy with respect to temperature. And that's where we get the Gibbs-Hemholtz equation.